In the previous video, we found that the trouble recorder in the number 5 crossbar was jamming and making a terrible noise when we tried to drop a card. We found that the problem was most likely that some punches in the perforator mechanism were bent. And we do have a donor trouble recorder that we took apart first, just to see if we could do it. But now, in order to replace the bent punches, we have to remove the perforator mechanism from the other machine and get it on the bench. And hopefully, while it's out of the machine, we can figure out what caused the bent punches in the first place. So what we're gonna do is then remove that stack of cards carefully and set that aside. Oh. And then, um, uh, we have to be careful when we take this out, so let's just hold on for a second yep. on that. The next thing we have to do, there's these two bolts that hold the, uh, the end bin in, yep. which is the thing you're looking at back there. And I'm just gonna leave the bolts in the empty space in the machine, like in these little trays here. That's the in bin removed, sorry, the out bin removed. you're doing that, I'm going to remove the front side of the, the holes collector. And so we removed the in bin and out bin and began to remove the chaff bin when we encountered our first problem. The Allen bolts holding the bin in place had mangled heads. It looks like this has been taken apart before and put back together by someone who used the wrong size tool. After much complaining, Charlotte found that they could actually be removed by turning slowly with our fingers. With that problem resolved, we moved on to disconnecting the card feed. In the previous machine, the coupling loosened and slid apart easily, but on this machine, it won't budge. After trying to pry it apart with a wooden stick, I realized that we were probably going to need to apply heat to melt whatever glue or dried grease was holding it in place. We had a blowtorch available, but I was feeling really reluctant to use it in a very tight space that contained other sensitive parts. Charlotte finally said, why don't you just throw 100 watts of soldering iron at it? And I didn't think it would work, and yet it did. We heated the coupling and were able to pry it apart. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> I, I cannot believe that worked. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. Thank you for insisting. <laughs> All right. I thought I had taken these out already. Are there not two more on this side? No, there's more on the front than there are in the back. Okay. Which, when I did this the first time, I assumed that there was an equal amount. Okay, it should just kind of fall out now. Yeah. Oh. Alright, so you can set it down. Finally, we had the card punch removed from the machine and on the lunch table. And what we found inside was surprising. So we can see the pins that are bent because they go down, but then they get stuck down. And they can, they can retract if they're brought up manually, but that's still not great. And then this one is obviously bent a lot, and I knew about this one. That one's not going down at all. This one, completely bent, not going down at all. And there was this one, which is partially bent. I can feel it with my thumb, although it's hard to see on film. And it won't go down at all. So that would be why the machine was jamming. So. What, I, what we found is that this entire half of the machine up here is really angry. 
and I don't know that replacing the pins is either possible, nor will it help. I've got one end of that one. These holes are where the punched chads are ejected from the machine, and many of them were completely clogged with paper. This must be why the punches are bending in the first place. Believe me when I tell you that this paper was very stuck in there. Astrid and I spent quite a while removing it with a dental pick. Like, this is hard. Like, this is like solid. It's metamorphic paper formed <laughs> deep underneath the Earth's surface under great pressure and temperature. But that would make sense as to why new punches are getting bent. Mm. Because if this was happening for a while, then it was just punching cards until there was simply no more room for the teeth to move. Because, I don't know, because given how hard this is to get out, I'm worried about breaking the pick for sure, you know? And Well, you would be the first one. Oh, this is, this is the exit side of the paper. Yeah. Even after we cleaned the exit holes, we found that there was pretty much no way that this perforator was going back in the machine. The entire right half of the pin mechanism was jammed, whether or not the pins were actually bent. Without taking it apart, we can't be sure why it's still jamming, but it's definitely no good. Unfortunately, the manual clearly says that you cannot replace one entire punch mechanism with a brand new one as they are each specifically mated to the machine that they're part of. But I think that in this case, we have no choice. So it sounds like it's time for another unauthorized repair. I took the working equipment, cleaned and oiled it, and prepared it to go back into our trouble recorder. I was still very worried about the shims, though. Could these all be a different size? One thing we did notice is that the number of shims on each machine was the same. So Claire measured the thickness of each of them and found that they were all identical. This is excellent news. It means that these perforators should be interchangeable with each other. There was just one more small problem to solve first. On the card feed chain in the working perforator, there are alarm contacts that detect when there's a misfeed. One of these contacts is broken and would therefore not detect a misfeed if one occurred. So Claire removed a working contact from the bad punch and replaced it in the new good one. There we go. Now we're finally ready to try and mate the good punch into our trouble recorder. It took us a while to get everything lined up correctly, but we figured it out eventually. Why does that slot in, but this one doesn't? That's perfect. That's in. That both sides? No. Well, 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 yeah. That's really close. All right, hold it. You're great. You're perfect. Hold it. Right, we're using the smaller head ones, I guess. Okay. All right, you can let go. Sweet. I I don't know why that worked that time. That time was different. The vibes were right. The vibes were right. Uh, all right, so the thing I have to remember is that I am not allowed to turn this thing on, even though it's back together. Okay. Too um, dangerous. Well, the thing is, it has to be it has to be timed. Oh, right. And everything. So. The temptation for me is like, oh, well, let's just turn it on and see how it goes, because that's what my brain wants to do immediately all the time. Um, when in reality, there's another day of work before I can like actually run this thing under its own power. Um, screwdriver, blue screwdriver. I saw it five gas. Um, that cobalt. It's like the Harbor Freight 10 for $10 special. <laughs> You've seen that video of the magic smoke coming out of that Harbor Freight like angle grinder. Or uh -huh. Oh my god, <laughs> it looks like fucking milk. Oh, I love that video. <laughs> 
At this point, we have the recorder put together enough to do some basic tests on the punches to see if they'll even operate. And there's good news. Everything seems to be fine so far. We still can't run this machine under its own power, as we need to make sure that the phasing of all of the components is correct. But if we turn it by hand, we can test that the punches at least extend and retract like they're supposed to. Now we have to put the chain drive assembly back together. That glue or grease got hard and sticky again, so it was a bit of a struggle to get the drive coupling back together. We eventually, once again, resorted to a soldering iron and some gentle prying. Is this keyed to only fit one way? No, I should fit. Yes, yes. After the main parts of the recorder were put back together, it was time to do the phasing and timing routine. I have mentioned before that the recorder has a complex series of phase adjustments that all need to be correct relative to each other. Since the punch mechanism was completely removed, we couldn't trust that the phase of the card transport would be in synchronism with everything else, so we spent an hour or two checking and rechecking against my previous notes. All right, so load cards in the trouble recorder. Take all the cards, make sure they're not stuck together, frayed, or have any sort of like grossness around these edges because if they do, they won't transport through the machine. Open the door, pull this guy down and make sure that the card table or the card elevator is in the down position. You load the cards in with the notches facing towards you, the, the, uh, the loader person. So put them on the table. Make sure they're all sort of lined up. And then take this guy and push him into the cards because this, this will actually engage the center notch and then align all the cards left and right. Once the cards are loaded, you can shut the door and then push it downwards and then the card elevator will launch all the cards up to the ready position. And then, you need to transport at least one card through the machine by hand. So you need to sort of like preload, preload the transport. So to do that, there's a relay armature right here that you have to push in so that you can unlatch this crank. So I will push in on this armature with my left hand and spin the crank clockwise with my right hand. Okay. Finally, we can now get a card to transport through the recorder. Well, there's only one thing to do now, and that's to test it under power. For the first test, we'll just transport cards with no punches activated. Then, we'll try to actually punch a proper trouble card and see if that works. The suspense is killing me. Why not? Hey! All right, that looks good. Okay, so it's working now. Almost. We still have a few more bugs to work out, but at least there are no bent punches, and it actually sounds a lot better too. I'm pretty proud of us, and I hope you are too. See you in the next video.